this is a project, a mural project about community. And today, community is still the thing that we need to pursue. A lot of people ask me, oh, you know, you help run the mural program. What's the process of get, you know, getting all the drawings to connect? And it's, it's different every year. I said it depends on the students, depends on the theme, depends on the wall. Um, I love oral history projects, so I'm looking forward to what we're about to learn. And I especially got excited today with um, Council President Waterman because she just sharing from her experience in that community, it just reminds me of like how much history we're about to learn. And I love how the students responded well and asked questions about Council President. And I think that they connected really well with her. And I think um, the students could really learn a thing or two, you know, from the history of Jersey City, you know, dealing with Marian projects. She just came in and just brought so much uh, insight and, and, and life to our project and the importance of community, right? Looking forward to what's gonna happen next week. You yep, know? start collecting all the pieces for our mural. And actually getting the layout of the land. Yep. pleased that you're here to be with us today. Um, we've been here since 1938. We're one of the city's oldest institutions and we'd love to tell you more. Um, and we're really excited that you're here to do an oral history project and create a mural for us. You know, you have generations of families who have raised their children here. Um, there are a lot of people in Jersey City who may no longer reside in Jersey City Housing Authority, but they have a rich history here because they have family members who um, grew up here or who still live here now. I myself was born and raised in Jersey City Housing Authority from a little bitty baby. Jersey City Housing Authority was one of the best in the state. We had people that came together, was able to put grants together to have the community better for the residents. So it is family orientated. About in 1973, Housing Authority decided that they wanted to get rid of Marion Gardens. Mm -hmm. So we had a big community meeting. People was deciding whether or not they wanted to stay here and fight the good fight. And they were offering people money to move out. So this way, you know, they can have the projects cleaned out and they can do what they wanted to do. But some people took the money, but ma majority of the people still stayed. You know, I mean, it, it was a long struggle, but you know, they went to court, they fought a good battle and the residents got what they wanted. They fixed the projects up and now it's what it is today. They are charged with ideas and now we're gonna go for the next days to come to see how that's gonna yeah go from word narrative, interview narrative, into visual narrative, right? Visual story, yeah. Yes, yes. Ready. It's exciting, let's, yeah, let's do this, yay. Tech. To be continual. <laughs>
This is amazing. I've lived in Marion Gardens 51 years. I work for the Boys and Girls Club as well, and I'm also a teacher assistant. Living in a community there, Marion, for 51 years, it has its ups and it has its downs. But for the past couple of years, it's been a pleasure. And one thing I can say about Marion, that it always has been a family-oriented, you know, community. type of art just started in, in around the world and started in Jersey City. When the art, this type of art started by teenagers, the community was against it. And that's why they called it graffiti, where people had, they used to go and sneak doing art. And that murals used to be called pieces. And graffiti artists would put pieces anywhere that they could find it. The amazing thing is, but that just shows the separation between kids and teens and the adults of those days. Today, we've come full circle where this art is not only accepted, it's become a worldwide movement. And the movement is including everyone in the art itself. And everybody contributes to the art, not be against the art, but to embrace the art. And the fact what it also does is, is that it also connects you to your community by having this here that this absolutely by you contributing to it your friends your neighbors your families everybody involved in it this is something that'll be cherished forever here at the uh, summer program for our high school students part of the public arts program we're actually at marion garden it's a little different this year uh, we're doing this in public housing and uh, the program enlists uh, kids from all the high schools across Jersey City and uh, they do some work around the history of the area and then they come up with a concept and you know we found it to be tremendously successful engaging young artists this year they also engaged the Boys and Girls Club so it reached down further into elementary school and it's been just a huge success year after year uh, we're thankful for the program to be here today and uh, to partner with public safety and I'll turn it over to director Shea here yeah, I think it's an important community in Jersey City, and it was an underserved community, as you mentioned. And in the 10 years we've been here, we've put a lot of resources into it. We have put a police facility right here in Mar Marion Gardens, and it's become part of the Marion Gardens community. The officers and the people who live here know each other. They talk to each other every day. The officers play with the kids. And I think this art thing is the next a generation of the city investing here in the beautification of Marion Gardens and showing the, how important this community is to us. And I especially want to thank all the kids because yeah. they spent a lot of time coming in and interviewing, sometimes very, um, very tough interviews with the officers about the police, community, working together, how important it is to be a part of the community. And from the artwork, I can see the kids really took what the officers said to heart. It's amazing of how sometimes it's good to put what it used to be back in front of people. They can be able to come and get excited like her granddaughter just did to say, that's my grandma, right? To be able to capture people that made a difference. I just remember so much love in Marion, her going to Washington, and they wanted to tear Marion down, but because of her, her girls went to uh, Washington, they kept Marion standing, got the funding, redevelop it. Sometimes we don't realize what got us here in the first place. And I think it's so more, so much more impactful to know that there was someone out here fighting for this place to even still be here. Right. Because if they didn't do that, who knows what this would be. I'm just so happy my daughter is a part of this. And here she go. Hello. Hi, Fee. This is my queen. I call her the queen. Girls rock but queen's rule, so I call her the queen. And this is the mural she partook in over here. And it's telling the history of Marion Garden, part history. It's a lot of history going in that one a mural, but you said protect Marion, save Marion. You have my grandfather's Doug's barber shop, who cut all the kids' hair, and yeah, and J Ms. Jackson candy store. I'm so proud of her. I'm proud of her too. Generational, all these amazing artists. That's amazing. Behind me, the 
photo of Betty Morris, who was such a strong advocate for so many years and such a leader in this community and providing so much to see her image with the watering can and the flowers flourishing the way she would want the community to flourish. And then on the wall adjacent behind me, seeing activities and concepts provided by youth who are currently enrolled in the Boys and Girls Club, after school programming and camp, and with Greater Bergen Community Action's Head Start program, which are located right here on site to see their dreams for themselves and their future on the wall adjacent to her image is really spectacular and just such a wonderful reminder of the power of community and the vision and dreams of this community here at Marion Gardens. It's such a fascinating experience seeing young people uh, work and, and, and pour out their creativity in this type of work. And, and, and Jersey City had created and foster, fostered an, an amazing environment for the arts to flourish, for the arts to take its place. And it's so good to be part of it. I think one of the most important things about uh, not only what uh, we are trying to do with the Healthy Greens JC program, but also the mural is to tell the story and the history of Marion Garden. thing about this wall is um, since this is our first time working going long to from was it wide to long now it's like really trying since it's we're trying to tell a story coming down and whatnot and trying to make it as cohesive as possible so it's really fun with also a lot of challenges that we encountered in the wall like um, it's kind of say really editing more on on site and really just sizing up again. Yeah, I totally agree. Like any time that I touch a mirror, I just want to get my imagination on and just create what I think is a beautiful story to tell to Marion Gardens because it's just really like we're all representing the past from, uh, from this mural. What we're doing since we're representing the era farms, we want to represent that through the apparatus that they use to grow their whole healthy greens and the giant tubes there. I also decided to gamify making the little simple workers to harvest the crops and bring it out. For this year, we're representing the Healthy Greens JC of Marion Gardens. So we tried showcasing how the, with Healthy Greens JC, the workers, they take in, they go through their process, packaging, give it away, and that way they engage with the community. It's been great. I love meeting all the new artists and working with the artists. It was definitely a long process. We had a lot more space this year to work with, so it was a lot of fun to design it and actually get to see it come to life on the wall. Um, I think it's going to bring the community together, highlighting the most important aspects like the cookouts and the just the basic fact that it's like colorful and happy and stuff like that. It's just so nice to be amongst other artists and working on a common collab collaborative mural. And, but this year, because we're making this mural for a specific community in our area, because we wanted to showcase the area's history and the area's people, so we had more of a responsibility to really do them justice. Most of my family, they grew up here, and it's like been a, an experience to learn more about the community here. It's been great trying to represent a great community over here. I think it has been such a blessing to work with the community. Um, being able to interview everyone in the community has been such a wonderful opportunity, and we even got to work and some of the children from the Boys and Girls Club on the mural and just having that involvement with the people in the community made the mural just that much more special. It's been really fun being with this program. And this year, this is like, I think this is my favorite mural because of how meaningful it is and how we've gotten to actually do some activities with the kids in the um, community too. Um, and it's just been really nice because I feel like the program has just gotten better and better over the years and it's just really nice. Working with the kids was a fun experience. Like we got to, learn about how like they want to their opinions going onto the wall and like what they think about the coloring the shapes and all everything yeah it's 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 nice to see that the kids can look at a mural in their community and say like hey i worked on that 
I was part of that. That's that's really cool. I just enjoyed interacting with them because I handled like all the colors and making sure everyone had what they wanted. So I really enjoyed like asking them like what they want and get their opinions on what color they want, what colors they want to like mix together to create another color. They're very creative and that's what I really liked about them. They seem to be really enthusiastic about this. They kept mixing different paints and they were just exploring with it. They were having fun. Yeah, I think we like learn off each other. Like even today, like for me, I am, um, I was showing like Sky yeah. about like some fades like that you can get, but I learned that from Trey. So like you learn from other people and then you kind of pass it on, which is really nice. So that makes it a nice um, like collaborative environment. It's been really great, a really great experience. Especially cause it's been like our first time. Like, I think it's your first time. His first time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I and then I know Umar. It's not his first time, but he's definitely been teaching us, like, little things. The people that were here for the first time and then the people that were here for, like, a long time, you kind of, like, see that bridge come together and it's, like, super cool. And it's just, like, it reflects on the mural. Yeah. No, I, I learned a lot. Uh, same, same from Trey. Like, I learned how to do, like, fist lines, how to fade and not fade. I had trouble with fading and everything. But it's, it's just been real fun. I've been learning a lot and having just fun with you guys. Exactly. And that's, I feel like that's basically all, that's the entire experience, just learning, having fun. I would say the mark I'm leaving on this community is the portrait of Betty Morris. And um, I'm so glad that I was picked out to do it because it's such an important thing to create and to have somebody's like life and also an image living on forever and being able to create it and make the people happy and seeing her own like um, granddaughter like just be so excited yeah seeing someone like seeing someone being touched by my work it makes it go outside of a job and just like something to do it's more like i'm bringing someone's like dreams to life or at least i'm bringing like i'm keeping a part of like their childhood and also their livelihood the community's livelihood um alive and it's you know it's right there and i'm so grateful i got to do it i'd say it's a very humbling experience uh, knowing that you're making a mural for a community that can be very uplifting. Uh, it really does put the meaning in the work. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Making a mural for an entire community, it can seem like it's a, a tall order, but once we got down to doing it, it seemed like the least we could do. Very fun, very interactive, and it makes me feel like we're really bringing all of what the community wanted together into one spot and they can always come back and see it and always think of us as those artists that help them visualize this way of community and this way of uh, togetherness, really.